this video, you'll learn step by step how to cube a binomial. In a previous video, we looked at squaring a binomial, and when you square a binomial, you're really taking a side length, multiplying it by the exact same side length, so that what you ultimately find is the area of a perfect square. So that's squaring a binomial. So what we're going to be doing with cubing a binomial is we're going to take things into the third dimension. And really what we'll be finding is no longer a surface area, but actually a volume of a cube. So essentially for this first problem that we'll look at, the side lengths of the cube are going to be 2x plus 5. So to find the volume of a cube that has a side length of 2x plus 5, we're going to work out 2x plus 5 to the power of 3, which is the same as saying 2x plus 5 cubed. To work out the expanded form of this cubed binomial, we're going to make use of Pascal's triangle. I explain how to get Pascal's triangle in a separate video. Now because we are finding a cubed binomial, we need to go down Pascal's triangle to the third row keeping in mind that this first row is actually row 0. So we're going to go down one row, two rows, three rows. So it's in fact this row here whose information we're going to use moving forward. We're going to use the numbers 1, 3, 3 and 1. And these numbers are what we call coefficients. they're going to be used to work out the expanded form of this cubed binomial. Let's look at this further. So we'll take these numbers 1, 3, 3, 1 and let's expand them out so we've got a little bit of space to work with. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to put an equal sign in front of the 1 and plus signs in front of the other coefficients. Next up you're going to put in some brackets, two brackets following each coefficient. From here we need to put a term in each bracket and we're going to take that first term from our original binomial which is 2x and we're going to put it in each of these brackets. Next up we're going to raise these terms to a particular power. So because we are cubing, the first power is going to be a cubed power. Then we've got squared, raised to the power of 1, and raised to the power 0. Next up we need to fill up these second brackets and we're going to take the second term from our binomial and just pop that in here. So in this case the number is 5, but we need to keep in mind at this point that if this binomial back up here, if it was for example negative 5, that in each of these four brackets here we would write negative 5. So just keep that in mind for a different problem where you have a negative sign. Next up we also need to raise these bracketed 5s to a particular power. So with this first term over here we went 3, 2, 1, 0. For the 5s we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to start with a 0 power, power of 1, power of 2 and power of 3. Now we have completely set up all the information that we need to go forward and work out what our ultimate final expanded cubed binomial is going to be. It's a bit of a mouthful and there are quite a few things that we need to be careful about as we proceed. First up, just write out this one and we're going to cube 2x which really means take 2 and cube it, so 2, 4, 8 and take the x and cube that as well. Here we have 5 to the power of 0 and it's really important that you remember anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. Then we've got the coefficient of 3, 2x to all raised to the power of 2 will become 2 squared which is 4 and x squared. Here we've got 5 to the power of 1 which is just 5. Then we've got our coefficient of 3 and 2x to the power of 1 is just 2x, 5 squared is 25. 
Then we have our coefficient of 1 at the end and 2x to the power of 0 is just 1 and 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5 so the first 5 times 5 is 25 and 25 times 5 is 125. Alright, now we need to do 1 times 8x cubed times 1. That's simply going to be 8x cubed. Then we've got 3 times 4x squared times 5. So I would do the numbers first, so 3 times 4 times 5. So 3 times 4 is 12, 12 times 5 is 60. The pro numeral that needs to go in here is x squared. Next up we need to work out 3 times 2x times 25. So let's do the numbers first which are 3 times 2 times 25. 2 times 25 is simply 50 and 3 lots of 50 is 150. The pro numeral that we need to put in is x. And lastly 1 times 1 times 125 is 125. So this is our final expanded cubed binomial. And a good last check to do here is check our pro numerals to make sure we've got an x cubed, an x squared, an x, and a constant term. By constant term, I mean one that doesn't have a pro numeral on the end. All right, that's for this this kind of binomial that we began with that just had one pro numeral in it. Obviously, if you had a pro numeral over here, like maybe a y, uh, it would be a bit different. But if it's in this general form, just check that you've got three different powers of x plus a constant term. Alright, that is how we set up a cubed binomial when we do it in expanded form. Let's have a look at a couple more examples and then it'll be your turn to have a go. Alright, so let's start by going down three rows on Pascal's triangle. One, two, three. So again, we're using one, three, three, one as our coefficients. So let's write those in with a little bit of space in between each of them. Next up, we're going to put in two sets of brackets after each coefficient. Next, we need to fill out all of our first brackets and they're going to have our first term for my, our binomial up here, which is 3x. So go, just go through and fill those out. Now we need to put powers on the outside. So we're going to start with our cubed, then squared, to the power of 1 and to the power of 0. Next up we're going to put in our second term so here we're going to stick this negative sign onto the 7 to make it negative 7 so fill that one out and then instead of going 3, 2, 1, 0 we're going to count up from 0 0, 1, 2, 3. So from here you can work out all of your numerals using a calculator but I'm going to show you um, a full line that you could actually skip once you get a little bit more confident just to show you exactly what's happening. So we've got the 1, we've got 3 to the power of 3 which is 27 and this is going to be x cubed. Negative 7 to the power of 0 is 1 plus 3, 3 squared is 9, x squared and negative 7 to the power of 1 is just negative 7. Next up we've got a 3, this 3x to the power of 1 is just 3x and negative 7 squared becomes positive 49. Remember two negatives when multiplied becomes positive. Plus 1, 3x to the power of 0 is 1 and negative 7 to the power of 3 is negative 343. Next up 1 times 27x cubed times 1 is just 27x cubed plus 3 times 9 times negative 7, so we're just doing the numbers first, 3 times 9 times negative 7 is negative 189, and our pro numeral is x squared, plus 3 times 3 times 49 is 441, and our pro numeral is x, and lastly 1 times 1 times negative 343 becomes negative 343 or subtract 343. We don't normally write plus minus so let's rewrite it just one more time so that it's using our convention of just writing that negative sign there.
And our final check is checking our powers and actually look I've made a mistake here so I've copied out the wrong number this should be x cubed so we've got x cubed x squared x and no pronumeral so this is looking pretty good let's move on to our next example now we are going to cube negative x plus 11 and we do that in exactly the same way so we've got our coefficients and you know what I'm just going to speed up the video a little bit here. I'm not going to talk through it. Just follow along with what I'm doing and then it'll be your turn to have a go. Now, negative x cubed will be negative x times negative x times negative x. So it will overall be negative and it will be x cubed. And there we have it. Negative x plus 11 all cubed is negative x cubed plus 33x squared minus 363x plus 1331. Alright, now it's your turn to have a go. Here are four examples for you to do. Uh, I'll get you to pause the video now and have a go. And if you run into any problems, I'll attach a video to the end of this so that if you are not sure how this was done, you can listen to me talking through these four examples. So pause the video now and have a go. Hopefully your answers match up with mine. If they don't, have a look at my working out, compare it to yours, and if you've got any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.